And so, uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Eileen Cahill. I'm the Vice President of Government and Community Relations at Holy Cross Hospital. And on behalf of the hospital, I am delighted to welcome you to the dedication of our third primary health care center for the uninsured and underinsured. All of you uh, joining us here today on this special occasion are important to us, and we so appreciate your support uh, for Holy Cross Hospital and our mission. But if I may, I'd like to acknowledge a few people. I'm not going to introduce the speakers because I'll introduce them as they come up, but I would like to acknowledge that uh, Council Member uh, Phil Andrews is here. Phil, thank you for being here. And uh, Council Member George Leventhal is also with us here today. And uh, uh, George is the uh, chair of the Health and Human Services Committee for the Council and has been very supportive of our initiatives, and we thank you, George, for that. I'd also uh, like to acknowledge some folks uh, from the County Executive's Office. We have um, Mr. Chuck Short back there. Thank you, Chuck. <laughs> Chuck, thanks for all your help in getting us to here today. Uh, Dr. Alder Tillman is here, the Health Officer, Dr. Tillman. Thank you for being here. And uh, a special friend of Holy Cross's uh, from the County Office who's been, uh, uh, who has been very instrumental to us in, uh, in the culmination of this, our third uh, primary care center, and that's uh, Bob D. Bernardis. And thank you, Bob, for all, for all you have done. Oh, Uma here. Oh, I'm sorry, Uma, Uma Alwalis, the, the uh, Director of Health and Human Services. I'm sorry, Uma. Oh, she just came in, so I'm absolved. Thank you. I'd also like to acknowledge a few of our trustees here today, and if I'm missing some, uh, somebody else can uh, also flag it for me. I know from the hospital uh, board is Dr. Hercules Pinkney. Her, thank you for being here with us. Tom, Tom Suey Tom is also here from the hospital board. And from the foundi, uh, foundation trustees board, we have uh, uh, Vandana Narang. There's Vandana, thank you. And, uh, and uh, Daniel Flores is with us as well. So thank you. Thank you for being here. Okay. So uh, before I introduce the uh, speakers, I just have a, one or two things to say. You know, I've been around for a very long time, and I've seen many initiatives in this county start and then come to a complete stop because too often what begins as a very good idea with many supporters fizzles out when the concept is big, complex, and resource intensive. And so I have always admired those who have both the vision and the tenacity to make big things happen in Montgomery County. And I particularly have admired those who have worked towards improving the safety net in our county over the last dozen years. I realize several uh, important individual, individuals have helped pave the way over the years. I know former County Executive Charlie Gilchrist has widely been credited for having expanded health and human services, but that was way before my time. I may be old, but I'm not that old. <laughs> <laughs> but I do recall as early as 1994, my fellow leadership Montgomery classmates, Dr. Bud Burton and Steve Goldstein, and soon thereafter, Steve Galen, approaching me to discuss their concept of what eventually became the Primary Care Coalition. One can only imagine the number of people they had to talk to along the way. No doubt they had the early support and strong support of Chuck Short, who was then the Director of Health and Human Services, then County Executive Doug Duncan, and the various chairs of the Council's HHS Committee along the way. Separate and distinct of what the early supporters of the Primary Care Coalition and later Montgomery Cares were building, Holy Cross Hospital has been quietly and methodically building its own network of safety net programs. Its commitment to the poor and vulnerable is as old as the hospital itself. Nearly 50 years ago when the hospital opened its doors to the very first patient, the hospital also began providing prenatal care to uninsured <coughs> women, culminating, culminating in today's more expansive and more integrated community delivery system under the leadership of Kevin Sexton. Kevin will be the first to acknowledge that Holy Cross's commitment to mission began with our founding sponsors, the Sisters of the Holy Cross. And no doubt in his remarks today, he will also acknowledge the key individuals who have been so instrumental in expanding Holy Cross's safety net programs in the last decade. But I'm going to take the liberty of being MC and say this. It takes vision, compassion, and fortitude to create, plan, and implement a broad-sweeping community-based initiative. 
fold into that establishing a community initiative that requires significant and ongoing financial investments with lots of risks and with little or no financial return. And what's likely behind it is an executive who has a broad sweeping vision, who has an unabiding belief in social justice, and who has the intellectual health to have to make it happen. We're here today dedicating the successful implementation of Holy Cross Hospital's big, complex, and resource-intensive community-based initiative because we're blessed to have a chief executive of the caliber of Kevin Sexton. Please join me in welcoming Kevin to the podium. Hey, thanks everybody. Thank you, Eileen. Welcome to our grand opening here at Aspen Hill. This is the third center that Holy Cross has opened, and it is part of our commitment because we think we can improve health status by offering extended primary care access for people who otherwise have no means to get it, um, easily at least. I, I do want to start, and Eileen knows me pretty well, I guess, because I didn't show her what I was going to say, but I do want to start by recognizing the origins of the commitment we've made. Holy Cross will be 50 years old next year. Uh, and ever since that time, it's been the Sisters of the Holy Cross who've been steadfast in the mission of the hospital. And, and access to everyone, an open door to everyone, and special attention to the vulnerable has been something they've kept in the forefront the entire time. They never wavered in that. And we're really just trying to live up to that, bottom line. Uh, this expansion at Aspen Hill uh, is part of a, I actually would trace it back to a conversation that Ike and I had a little over four years ago. And uh, at that time, I made a commitment that we would step up because the county saw a lot of need and we didn't have enough primary care capacity to deal with it. And I said <coughs> that with help from the county, Holy Cross would take some steps to try to significantly improve access by significantly improving capacity. Uh, in the four years since then, we've added two sites. This is the second one. We added, we added one in Gaithersburg, and we've added one today here in Aspen Hill to our original site in Silver Spring. And this next full year, we will quadruple the number of visits we did the, 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 during the year that I had the first conversation with Ike. So we're very pleased with that. We're very proud of that. I want to thank Ike, and I want to thank the County Council for their support. And I do appreciate the work of the Montgomery Cares Board, the Primary Care Coalition, and especially MedStar Montgomery Medical Center, because they are contributing to the support of this facility, and Suburban Hospital, which has contributed to the, to the uh, Gaithersburg facility. And special thanks to Pete Monge um, for the leadership he's provided on, on the Montgomery Cares Board and for his advocacy within MedStar uh, for this project. I do want to recognize some other folks. Um, first and foremost, all the people at Holy Cross. Their hard work has allowed the hospital to generate enough funds to make these kinds of investments. They are obviously not top of mind when people are looking for a return on investment. Uh, and they require other people generating dollars from their work for us to be able to do it. As the times have gotten tougher, they've gotten better at it, which has enabled us to keep doing this. And so we were able to open Gaithersburg in the teeth of the last recession and we're opening Aspen Hill with our usual exquisite timing in the year when the state is going to cut hospital reimbursement uh, through the rate setting system. But the staff has made the difference and they've enabled us to be able to do this along with obviously the support of all the organizations and people I mentioned. I wanna thank the staff here and at all three of our health centers. Their standard is great care for all patients always. That's hard work. They do it extremely well it's very important for us. It's very important for the people who come here. We don't do it, I don't do it, but the people who work here do. Especially though, I wanna thank the leadership within the community care area at Holy Cross. I wanna thank Roseanne Pica for her exceptional overall direction and the mentoring she has done. Cal Robinson and Elise Riley. I see Elise. I know. Cal's of course in the background. They are an extraordinary team. They have energy commitment and skill that really inspires me. Um, I commend the partnership between the community care delivery area and our community health programs under Wendy Fryer's leadership. We've done some really interesting things putting those together and we couldn't have done it without Wendy's help. 
We also have a partnership with our emergency room, and I see Kim Baker here, and Kim and Tim Del Vecchio have worked with us to try to make sure that people seen in the emergency room can then be seen by a family doctor and not by the emergency room again. Uh, we've used a lot of things to try to build that continuum. We've used electronic medical information. We've really pioneered that. We use virtual care, and you can see a demonstration of that. The board inside will soon allow us to do specialty consults from afar. Uh, and finally, good old-fashioned one-on-one follow-up care, which we do a lot of with our ethnic health promoters and others. Patients seen at Holy Cross's emergency room are more than twice as likely as patients seen elsewhere to get an immediate visit in a health center. And over 80% of them actually make those appointments when they may show up for them. These techniques and others were developed with help from the state, Primary Care Coalition, Care First, the Marriott Foundation, and the Health Initiatives Foundation, among others. We're going to now apply them to patients discharged from the hospital, not just the emergency room. We are seeing an impact in terms of trying to prevent people from having to be readmitted because of what happens not in the hospital, but after they go home. We now utilize some of the things we've learned in this process to help us with our fully insured patients. To be truthful, that was even with money, we didn't necessarily do coordination that well. We've, we've learned a lot from this. And sometimes a story, I think, helps you demonstrate what we're talking about even better than, than statistics. And I would like to just read to you from a, a little vignette from our, from our latest community benefit report. <clears throat> Akweli Amagavi came to Holy Cross with extreme swelling in her legs and a severe wound that was not healing, caused by uncontrolled high blood pressure and diabetes. Like many people without health insurance, she couldn't afford preventable treatment for these and therefore frequently required emergency care and hospital care when they became critical. She says, when I went to the hospital, the doctors and nurses really got my problems under control. But when she went home, Martha Pedrosanta from Holy Cross Transitional Care Program contacted her to make sure she understood the diagnosis, the instructions, and filled her medication prescriptions. Martha says, I provided instructions in her native French to ensure she took all 10 of her medicines correctly. I also made follow-up appointments at the health center and facilitated her enrollment in Medicaid. Now a year later, her health is stabilized. She takes her medications regularly. Her diabetes and blood pressure are under control and her wound is healed and she has not been hospitalized in a year. That is not typical, unfortunately, uh, but it is really important, and it is our future if we're not going to go broke. I feel like a new woman, thanks to Holy Cross Hospital, she said. My view of this, and I'll end with that, is if we're going to make health care affordable for the individuals and for government payers, we're going to have to make it better, not less available. That's what community care is about. That's what we're committed to for the long run. That's why we're proud to be here today. And thanks for all of you for joining us. Thank you.